bright-eyed this morning, aren't you? I can see. You probably feel like you've never been this rested before in your life, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's midterm week, and you all are working hard, and so we appreciate you coming and spending this next 45 minutes with us in worship, and also as kind of an overflow to homecoming weekend. Had a great weekend. How many people enjoyed their time this weekend? Yes. It's a great time. You had a little too much fun, sounds like. Yeah, a little too much fun on that. Well, today is kind of a carryover from homecoming. This is Alumni Chapel where we're going to hear from three of our alumni about what's happening in their lives and how TFC made a difference in their lives. And Dr. Bob will be leading in that discussion this morning, so we are excited about that. I also want to share with you two additional announcements this morning before we open in with a call to worship here. Number one is this, there will be sign-ups today in the Student Center for Envision Miami. Okay, Next week we'll actually have the Envision Atlanta folks with us, but you can begin to sign up and hear about Envision Miami um, today in the Student Center. So go and talk to Faith Champion, Nui, and others that will be talking about that mission um, taking place next semester. Also, I want to really encourage you to be here tomorrow. I know it's the last day before fall break, but we have a very, very special guest on campus with us. His name is Dr. Jim Loring. Dr. Jim Loring is a photojournalist, and over the last 30 years, he's spent his life documenting the plight of refugees all over the world. And he's going to be here tomorrow to, to share through his photography the stories of those folks that he has encountered. It's going to be a very, very powerful time, I'm just, I'm just saying. And so I want to invite you to come and to kick off your fall break as we spend it first and foremost here and talking and, and, and hearing from Jim Loring about this, uh, this really important issue that we as the people of God ought to be not only interested in, but doing something about. All right, and so I want to invite you to come and to be a part of that tomorrow at 10. As we move into our time of worship, I'd like for you to stand this morning. And in so doing, we haven't done this in a while, let's go back to our call to worship with one another, along with the psalmist. As we prepare our hearts and our bodies for worship, we pray this prayer. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Let's worship energetically this morning. Amen? All right, let's do so. All right, TFC. Let's worship together. We're going to sing a song called This I Believe. We're going to declare in this place our faith. We're going to declare boldly what we believe. We sing, I believe in God our Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
our faith. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you, worship team. It's good to be with you guys. How's it feel to be halfway through the semester? How's it feel to have no classes Thursday and Friday? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, it's good to be with you. We've had a great weekend with Alumni Weekend, and I hope you had a chance to talk with some alums as you encountered them throughout the weekend. 
I've heard some remarkable stories from our graduates. And we thought we'd have some fun with you today. This is really just going to be a fun day. We've invited three alums to come and to speak and talk with you. And I'm going to ask them some questions. And uh, you guys might even yell one out. Who knows? Uh, but it's just going to be a fun time. They're all going, uh-oh. But let me introduce them, and I'm going to call them up one by one. Let's go ladies first, shall we? Kristen Torres Toro, 2007 graduate from Adventures in Missions. <laughs> Orlin Marquez, 1992 graduate. He is a family nurse practitioner. <laughs> and the real trouble spot in our panel... Kendall Hicks, a 1984 graduate. He's the senior pastor at Carpenter's Church in Anderson, South Carolina. He walks a little slower than them. I'm oh. just glad I'm not, I'm not using my walk cue. I'm good. We're glad you could leave it down there. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, welcome, guys, and, and ma'am. Thank you for being here. It's good to Thank have you. you. Let's just briefly... Kristen, tell us what you're doing right now. I'm a missionary with Adventures in Missions um, I, in Gainesville, Georgia. Yeah. Uh, I work, I'm a copywriter. I work in the stateside office, and I go out on two to four short-term mission trips a year. And Orlin, you know we're getting ready to crank nursing up here. So That's tell awesome. Us, yeah. I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm a family nurse practitioner, so I've uh, trained in nursing. Um, I remember being here and, and you know, loving the training and everything and thinking about, you know, possibly using that in the future. So this is like a dream come, th come true uh, to hear about the uh, School of Nursing. So that's what I'm doing right now. And, and what are you doing exactly now? Well, um, primary care. So I'm right here down the road uh, working with something that was in my heart for a long time was to become a uh, provider that could work with uh, the underserved population, those people who uh, we call limited English proficient people, people who cannot communicate in English very well. Um, so I am a provider for those um, who uh, speak Spanish. Um, so I do primary care. 90% um, of my patients are Spanish speakers. Uh, I do English as well, of course. Uh, but, um, but I do primary care, so a lot of uh, uh, chronic conditions like um, hypertension, diabetes, etc. So since you're so close, give a plug for where you are. Um, where, where are you working? Um, I'm right here in Cornelia. In so. Cornelia. Yeah. Okay. Good. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Kendall, it's yes, all sir. you, man. Well, my name's Kendall Hicks, and I am the pastor at the Carpenters Church in Anderson, South Carolina. And uh, I've been there for about seven years now and just really um, having a good time there. Well, welcome back. Good to be here. All right, Orlin, as you think about your time at, at TFC, what's your favorite memory of all the years you were here? Well, I had a wonderful time here. I, uh, you know, the uh, circumstances by which I came here were nothing short of uh, miraculous, and that's a story for another day probably. But um, probably the, uh, the time that I spent during a choir tour in uh, 1990 uh, was probably my favorite memory and the uh, the time of fellowship the time of camaraderie that I spent there uh, the uh, challenges of uh, living with a bunch of my uh, fellow um, classmates yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was interesting but I learned a lot of things and uh, we were able to to grow together um, uh, from each other and also from Mr. Worley who was a um, was a Great, 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 great uh, role model. Neat. Hey, can you tell everyone just briefly, tell them a little bit about your story and how you ended up at TFC. We've got so many students, and I tell students all the time, you're not here by accident. You know, God's called you. He's placed you here. And you may think you're here by accident, but you're not. And many of them have remarkable stories of how they ended here this year. Uh, will you talk a little bit about your past? Um, well, I... Uh, worked in uh oh they just showed your picture <laughs> oh no don't do that <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> not nice there bro um so i worked in uh, full-time missions uh for a long time even before i came to uh to go falls college i worked with operational mobilization 
and uh, right um, the year before I came to Tuko Falls College, I had told the leadership at uh, Operation Mobilization that I, my commitment with them was just for a year, and I had already been with them for six or seven. I said, I, I have to go finish college. I need to go, you know, you know, finish my education. So I had been on a tour around with, yeah, with one of the teams for OM around the U.S., and I had told them I'm going to start visiting colleges because I got to go back to college. And I had been around the West Coast and had seen many big colleges and you know big names in Christian colleges around the West Coast and everything. And you know trying to make a decision. And the headquarters for OM in the U.S. is right here in Tyrone, Georgia. And um, we had a. I think it was during a um, one of the college preview days here. We had a, a table uh, here for operation mobilization. I had come not to visit the school, just to, you know, to be a part of OM. I had to come to, uh, to Gold Falls College. So the campus liked it. It was kind of in my heart a little bit, you know, I said like, well, that's a possibility, but I never really seriously had considered to Gold Falls College. It was just in my head. Well, Fast forward, I, I was sent by OM to go uh, do some work in the Philippines that same year. And uh, I was in Iloilo um, in one of the islands, and I was sent to work at, at a church with some missionaries. And uh, actually uh, shared at one of the Sunday services, and after the service, we went out for lunch. The missionaries at the church took us out for lunch. And uh, after lunch, we were talking about what are you going to do? And I don't know why. I said, well, after we finish here, I'm going to, you know, I plan to go to college. And the missionary lady uh, said, so where are you going? And I said, oh, it's a small college. What, what came to my head was to call Falls College. All of the colleges I had visited was to call Falls College. I don't know why. Um, and I said, well, it was a small little college, insignificant, you've never heard of it, you know, it's, it's what, I, what I told her. And she said, oh, come on, try me. And I said, to go false college. And she said, oh, my, I started laughing. And I said, uh, did I say something funny? And she said, oh, no, you didn't say anything funny. It just so happens that my dad is the president there. <laughs> It happened to be Sharon and Jarvis Crosby were the yeah. missionaries, Dr. Alford, yeah. Dr. Alford's daughter. Uh, all the way out there in the Philippines, it happened uh, that I met her. I think God sent you a message that day. Yeah, yeah. It, he did, very clearly. <laughs> Kristen, favorite memory? I don't have an exact favorite memory. Um, I was trying to think about that. and. What I loved so much about Tacoa in my time here was the community I was a part of. And so, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, so <laughs> so um, I think for me it was my Barnabas group and um, going to Dr. Williams' house to Inklings. Um, Dr. Elkins would have us over and we would watch Lost because we were all fanatics. Um, I met my best friend here and we shut down Zaxby's every Thursday night. Excellent. And that stuff, those are what the memories I remember. Kendall, you still awake? Yeah, I'm, I'm with okay. you. Um, All right. Wow. I, I'm kind of like Kristen. Uh, there's no one uh, specific memory. Oh, oh you got to look. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you see, I was here so long ago that it was in black and white. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? That's how long ago it's been uh, since I was here. Um, memory number one would be that I found this place uh, because um, – I grew up in uh, a denomination that was not Christian Missionary Alliance, mm -hmm. and I actually grew up in a very fundamentalist type church, and uh, my pastor uh, really thought that God wanted me to go to Bob Jones University, and that was my response. <laughs> I mean, we were like um, driving on vacation, and 
and uh, from Florida back to Georgia. I stopped at the Welcome Center, and I was looking through brochures of some colleges and found Skull Falls College. Huh. And I pulled it up, and I said, this might work. <laughs> and uh, I was very spiritual. And, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and came up and checked this place out and just fell in love with it. And I heard about the story from the flood in 77. Mm-hmm. And I uh, just really felt led to come here, and, uh, and I did. It was, it was a great experience. And uh, then I, I fast forward. I had a great time, Hop, because uh, a, another great memory uh, for me would be uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I was able to come back and see the chapel. And just seeing what God is doing in this place is it, just amazing to me uh, because uh, I almost told you during worship, you know, the music's a lot better now than it was 30 years ago. I'll tell you that right, it is a yeah. lot better. And, and just the atmosphere in this place is amazing to me. And I am really um, just pumped about what I believe God is setting this uh, college up for uh, in, in the future uh, because, you know, I believe that, that you guys are uh, God's hope for this world and God's hope for our country. So that would be my two minutes. Neat. Can you just show them your socks? Hey, man, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all at TFC uh, try to have this coolness factor. You know, when you're walking through campus, you got to be cool. If you trip and fall or you go down into the dirt, you don't check yourself. You look to see if anybody saw you. You know, all those kinds oh, yeah. of things. What's your most embarrassing moment here, Orla? <laughs> can't remember I can't remember anything uh, anything in oh, the come, on, man, come, come on man come on come on there's uh-huh. a recess and fresh memory in there somewhere yeah <laughs> it's, gotta <laughs> it's gotta be can't think of anything I can't think of anything right now um it's okay because I mean you look cool like you probably never yeah. had any Maybe after, after. You'll think you know, of something. I'll think of something, yeah. Okay, I'm going to let Kendall go last because I know he's probably got 20 of them. Kristen? <laughs> well, I'm not going to talk about the time I walked into a window thinking it was a door and bounced <laughs> off it because no one saw that. So it did it Doesn't happen? Count. I no. don't know. <laughs> but I will say my final year on the awards chapel, I won an award called English Paper of the Year. And so I came up here to get it, and they told us to, you know, shake hands, envelope or certificate or whatever it was, twist, pose, smile at the photographer, and then we could go back to our seat. So I obeyed, you know, walked up, came, so went to shake Dr. Williams' hand, reaching for the envelope, and the photographer goes to take a picture, and the camera didn't take a picture. And then it happened again, and it happened again. He switched cameras, and it happened again. It took three cameras, and this was before iPhones, so there were no <laughs> other cameras in the audience, and so I wasn't so much embarrassing, but it was really funny, and Good, good. I like the window one, too. That's good. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. It happens. Kendall. Which year? You can pick one. Okay. Okay. Um, life was one embarrassing moment after another for me, and um, which, if, if you're not embarrassable, it didn't really bother you that much. Um, we just kind of laughed our way through, through school here. Um, gosh, uh, there's so many. I was thinking about it, you know, driving down here. Um, I'll tell you one that uh, I'll say this one after a couple. Uh, and, and both involved having to speak in front of a class, which is what I do now for a living every week. And um, psychology class, um, that professor is no longer here. It was awful. So just so you'll know, it was not, I, I know it's better now, but it was just really dull. And we all had to give an oral presentation. And so I got up to, to give my oral presentation. And as I'm giving my presentation, and I really didn't like the class anyway, and n- nobody did honest with you, and um, it's just the way it was. And That's why the prop um, isn't here anymore. It, it is, uh, <laughs> probably so, yeah. yeah. The, the school's much better now than it was <laughs> in, in the 80s. Um, as I'm giving a presentation, a friend of mine, a supposed friend of mine, holds up a sign in the back that says, your fly is open. <laughs> and I just stopped and looked. You know, I mean, what do you do? I mean, because there wasn't a, po- I mean, the podium was kind of narrow, so if it's, if it's there, it's there. But I stopped and looked, and it just messed up my whole presentation. Um, a- another time, uh, I was giving a presentation in, uh, it's the one that doesn't preach, I think. It's yeah. what happens when I'm speaking in public. Uh, and it was um, the church in rural Michigan, okay? Uh, the church in rural Michigan. And it was actually a pretty good class. It was a very enjoyable class. It was an evening class. 
how to give a, a nice business class. And um, I'm giving my presentation. It was a small class. There were only about 15 of us in the class. And uh, I hope I can say this here, okay? I, this is on I hope you can, too. I hope I can, too. If I get ushered off, you'll yeah. know. If I'm not back next year, you'll, you'll know. <laughs> uh, and so in the middle, middle of my presentation, uh, this guy, somebody in the class farted. I mean, like, I mean, it was just kind of reverberate through the room. And, and, and I paused, and I, sh- and I just stopped for a minute, and then I proceeded with my presentation trying to be professional. And then all of a sudden, somebody in the class went, Ooh, you know, that, that number. And then for like 30 minutes, the professor is rolling on the floor. He's laughing so hard. And, and I'm dying laughing. Everybody in the room's laughing but one person. <laughs> If you're looking for a church home, <laughs> we'd love to have you. Because uh-huh. we believe the kingdom of God is fun. It should be. Yeah. And I give him a rough time because we've been friends for a while. Yeah, so, absolutely. so it's fun to really mess with him. Let me throw this out to all of you. As you think back of your time here, was there just one particular moment that God really spoke to you about something that you just never forgot? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I came here in my fourth and fifth year. I went to a Christian school until it was eighth grade, and then high school was public high school. First three years of college were a secular school. So I came in, and I'm suddenly taking Bible classes, and I was moved to tears by what was being taught. Um, the Word of God was so alive, and um, just the fact that I could study the Bible in school was just, I felt such freedom in that. Um, when I was a little girl, my dream was to be Billy Graham. <laughs> And I used to write him letters, and he wrote me back. And I had a a shoebox full of letters, and I had a shoebox full of tracks that I collected. So I obviously didn't get the whole idea of, like, passing them out. (laughs) But um, I gave some away, but a lot of them, it was in my treasure box. And um, it wasn't until I was older that I realized that the letters were typed, and there was a stamp for his signature. (laughs) So maybe he wasn't really writing me. I don't know. But it was my dream. And I was the 100th class at TFC 2007, and I don't know if it was the 75th year or the 50th year, but Billy Graham spoke that year. So at the 100th class, the baccalaureate, his grandson spoke. And so I'm sitting there about to finish college, and um, I know I'm heading out to the mission field in three weeks. I was going to lead a trip to the Amazon for two and a half months. And I'm listening to the grandson of Billy Graham talk about his grandfather and how his grandfather studied the word of God daily and would lock himself in his office for hours and just pour over it and all of this. And then he, one day he asked his grandfather, he said, um, if, was there anything you'd do over again? And his grandfather said, I wish I'd spent more time studying the word of God. Mm. And so for me, the capstone of my time at TFC was hearing the grandson of Billy Graham telling me to remain a student of the word of God. Mm. Wow. Uh, a little bit uh, on the same um, vein. For me, um, one of the things that I remember uh, very clearly was uh, hearing Dr. Neff, uh, who was at the time I was here, the um, director of the School of Communication. My my degree when I graduated was in interpersonal organizational communication. Um, Talking to me um, right before I gave him the, the paperwork for him to sign for the application for graduation. And we were talking about different things, and uh, he uh, looked at my transcripts and, and everything, and, and I was, you know, super stressed about all kinds of things that were going on, and it seemed like, you know, things were kind of losing, you know, I was losing perspective on everything that was going on. And uh, he started signing everything, and then he passed the uh, paper back to me, and, uh, and he circled something, and he said, this is what should be important to you in the midst of everything. Not because it's, it's a number, but because what it means you have accomplished here. And he circled, he said, there's a 4.0 under your Bible GPA. That should mean everything to you in this time. And it made me stop, and it made me think, and I have never, ever forgotten that moment that 
what's important was the foundation I was getting in my Bible training. And to this day, that, that, that's what's important to me. Out of everything that I got at Tacoa Falls College and what has helped me do for, for what I am today, uh, a family nurse practitioner, what I learned in, in the foundation of, of Bible training, that's what's carried me through everything else. Anything hit you, Kendall? Just a time when God really spoke to you? Yes. Yeah, can you remember a per one particular time in your time at TFC when God spoke to you about something that you've never forgotten? <laughs> I think God spoke to her and said, don't marry yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and there were so many times in my life when, when I really felt God uh, close to me. Uh, I, I can't pull out just one. Um, you know, I, I remember... Um, you know, friends who got saved here, you know, in chapel, uh, recommit their lives to Christ here, feel a call to ministry here. Uh, I never had a moment like that. Um, but um, I remember uh, several chapels. Uh, there was one in particular where uh, there was um, a, a young guy from the Baptist Church. He's not old, he's not young anymore, but a couple years ago, uh, from a church in Fayetteville, Georgia, that came to know Christ. And uh, I never heard of the guy. He's a pastor at Neo Baptist Church. And Fayetteville, Georgia. He's been the pastor of Goring Church since Goring's time. And um, he spoke that day. And the truth is, uh, I don't remember anything he said. But to, but to this day, I still remember how I felt while he was saying it. Does that make sense to you? And, and that's one thing that, that I have prayed regularly in my life. Uh, that God, um, you know, I, I want folks to feel what I felt that day whenever I had a chance to address this issue because what I felt was God. I felt the Holy Spirit moving in my life. And uh, more, more than anything, his point for his message or his content or his homiletics, I knew God was in the house that day. And, um, and that's why, you know, I said, you know, what I said a moment ago about being here, you know, God's in this place today. And I want you guys just to understand just how, uh, how, I mean, for as precious that is, and how significant that is, uh, that uh, the Lord himself uh, has chosen to abide in this place, and his presence is here. And I don't mean his omnipresence, I'm talking about his manifest, close presence is here. And it's a special thing, because I've been places in my life where he wasn't there, where he wasn't there. And so never take these moments for granted, but that was in my life. Let me just ask all of you, sort of following up on what Kendall was talking about, you know, the culture's pulling us in so many different directions. So many things are going on in the world today. We've got students who are just coming in as freshmen and trying to figure all of this out. We've got students getting ready to go out as seniors. What am I going to do? There's a lot on people's minds. What one piece of advice would you give our students today as they're either in this place or getting ready to leave? One thing that I always want to leave with people and something that I actually learned here that has remained with me throughout my whole life is the following. Always um, remain relevant as a Christian and a, as a, you know, a warrior of the kingdom of heaven. And just resist the tendency to um, for lack of a better word uh, sloppy thinking especially in, in, a, in an age like today let me explain what I mean with that uh, when uh, I think it was second semester freshman that we took hermeneutics um, our textbook was uh, understanding and Applying the Bible by Robertson McClokin. And uh, as I was reading one of the chapters, I came across a passage where he was talking about sloppy thinking. And the sloppy thinking that he was talking about was, you know, you come across truth in the Bible. There's truth in the Bible. There's truths that, you know, sometimes uh, complement one another. 
and you have to cross-reference them. And it's so easy to just take one out of context and just sling it out there or to hang on to them. And uh, sometimes we just stand on them and just, you know, just want to just hang on to them. And, and people look at us and they don't understand why we do that. And he ended that paragraph by saying, and this quote has been quoted many times, but to me, it, it was a pivot, pivot, pivotal moment, understanding that. He said, he ended that paragraph by saying, sadly, it is easier to go to a consistent extreme than to remain in the center of biblical tension. And I want to challenge you today with Robert McQuilkin to always remain in the center of biblical tension. Um, I'll give a charge, a challenge that was given to me yesterday at our chapel at Adventures, and that was we think a lot about um, Judea and Samaria, but don't forget about Jer Jerusalem. And for me, that's Gainesville, Georgia. And there are people in Gainesville who are hungry, and they're, they don't know how they're going to pay the power bill. Um, there are thousands of immigrants in Gainesville, and they don't speak English, and they don't have driver's licenses, and so they can't get jobs. And all of this, there's ministry right there. There are people who are hurting right there. And if we as a missions organization are so focused on sending people to the rest of the world, but we miss our own town, there's a problem. And when I was a student here, I don't know if this was still a thing, but we talked a lot about the TFC bubble. And um, my... No, it doesn't exist It anymore. doesn't exist anymore? Okay, good. They all broke it. <laughs> awesome. My mom works for the Georgia State Patrol, and so she would tell me what she saw about Stevens County. And at the time, she saw that Stevens County had the highest meth rate in the state and also the highest teenage pregnancy rate. There's a story about what's going on in Tacoa right now. And so I encourage you um, to look at what's going on in your classes, what you're being taught in school, what you're taught in church, what you're talking about across the lunch table, not only as preparation for the future, but as how to approach ministry when you go out to dinner tonight. Um, don't forget to co -op. Great advice. And I would, um, I would share this. One thing uh, of the many things that this, these three positions uh, while I was here was uh, it challenged me to think. some uh, just uh, amazing professors, except for psychology, they were all great. And um, just love he's, it. He, you can relax, guys. he's not here anymore. Had some great guys, guys. and um, probably even dead. But anyway, we won't go there. Because <laughs> uh, he, was, he was up there. But anyway, we, we thought a couple times in class it might have happened, but I won't, you know. Um, that was bad. That was bad. I shouldn't have said that. And, uh, but through some challenged to think about things of, about God I'd never thought about before. I was challenged concerning some views of God that I had and, and, and views of different areas of theology. And, and what I learned was that God was way bigger than I thought he was. And 30-something years later, I'm still learning that God is way bigger than I thought he was. And the, the one encouragement I would give you is never, never stop exploring the vastness of the love and the goodness and the faithfulness and the power of God. Uh, because uh, no matter how dark this world gets, uh, he wants light to shine through us. And I believe he is raising us up uh, for that day. Um, I, I truly believe that awakening is coming to this country. And it's going to come through uh, those of us who are just who, who just will relentlessly not let go of how good and how great and how awesome God is. Amen. Amen. We weren't planning on this, but any questions you want to yell out? Bark, 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 bark. Nothing? Going once? Best class at TFC that you took.
Can you remember that far back? Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, it'll come to me in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> There were uh, a lot of professions that were here today, but I, I think of three who um, uh, were really, I think, just, just had an impact on my life. Uh, one was uh, his first year pro- as a professor here was my first year as a student. His name is Kimball Easley. And, and Dr. Easley is now, I think, at Union University in, in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, just, uh, he was amazing uh, to me. And just, he believed in me. And, and that was important. And he was always happy. And I remember asking him one time, why, why are you always happy? Because, you know, you can't be a person. He, he reminded me of some of this on Facebook. He said, Kimber, you remember that day that you were in class? He said, why are you different from all the other professors here? You're always happy. And, uh, and I, I don't know his answer was. But anyway, he was great. Uh, another uh, professor who was young in the day, uh, James Patterson taught history. And uh, I remember Dr. Patterson and uh, I liked him so much, I took every class he offered and wound up with a minor in history. I didn't intend on getting one, but it just kind of worked out that way. And then um, um, uh, John Talamosi was, was one of my preaching professors and um, was just an amazing man of God. And uh, his encouragement and his inspiration uh, really did me well. And, um, you know, he, he believed in us. And, and he believed in me. And that's one thing that we all need, I think, at times, is someone who believes in us. So it was, it was one of those three classes. Orland, you remember class or? New Testament with uh, Professor Vena and uh, Church History. Okay. My favorites. All right. Life and Revelation of Christ and then the, the letters, New Testament letters. Okay. Thanks for being here. Thanks it's, for having it's, me. Let's give them a round of applause and thank them. <laughs> Just stay put. Thank you for being a part of this and just to have some fun today. I'm going to dismiss this in prayer. When I'm done, you're off to the races. Have a safe break. Enjoy it. Watch some Netflix like you don't do that now, okay? <laughs> Lord, thank you for uh, just the gift of laughter, the ability to have fun, to have joy in our lives, Lord. We are so grateful for that. Thank you for the way that you direct folks to TFC. We all have different stories to tell. We all have different stories of how your hand has been upon us and how you've guided us to this place. But, Lord, we're grateful for this place and for it, the, the service of TFC for so many over the years. I pray for each student that's here today that you'll guide them in what they're doing. Uh, give them just relaxation over the course of this next weekend, a chance to unwind a little bit, even though I know there are still things hanging over their heads. But, uh, Lord, give us a chance for some relaxation and a chance to read. Thank you again for all that you're doing. Thank you for these wonderful alums who are with us today. Bless their ministries. Keep your hands on them. Bless their families, too. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen.